Good morning, Grace family. We are here vibing in the lobby because they they have on the, on the sound system, blessed in the city, blessed hey. in the field. So I got to calm down a little bit. Hey, I am blessed to be here. I'm your brother from a different mother, Keith Sistrunk. This is my brother, Dr. Joseph, and I am still jealous that his name is in the Bible and Keith is not. Anyway, good morning, sir. <laughs> good morning. How are you, sir? Good to see you, man. <laughs> it's good to be seen. It is. It's good to be it's seen. It's better to be seen. And not viewed. Oh, yeah, he's got the word this morning. You know? Thank you all for being here. This is a great day. There's so much happening. And I'm telling you, that message from last service yes. from Pastor Brett. It was good. We are to be hope carriers to so many people dealing with hopelessness. Yeah, but man. we ain't going to preach it for you. You're in to see the service and to hear what the word has to say to you. So again, welcome. And please invite as many people as you can. If you have to be somewhere remote, that you can be here and invite people to watch the service with you. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Good. You know, I'm doing real good at the first. I'm hyped up. I didn't have my coffee. I didn't have my worship. Folks. Got my music. Yes. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we believe that a planted Christian yes. is a thriving Christian. And that's what we want to do is to not just to welcome people in, but also get them plugged in to find out God's purpose for their life. So we want to, how should we tell the people to get connected? Look, if you don't want to keep being a bootleg member, as I call them, right, we're going to have a moment that pops up right there on the screen. It's going to give you some uh, opportunity to give us some of your information. We're not going to bother you. We're not going to hound you. We just want to connect with you. We want to let you know a little bit about us. We want to know a little bit about you and welcome you into the fold. So that connect card is going to be up there, right? It should be up there right now. You click on it, it'll take you to another screen so you can fill out some information so we can give you some more information about us. And you know, we have faithful people that's online, our online community, yeah. and they're so faithful to send messages and to re re answer questions and things right there online. And so, again, if you have questions, hey, hit us up at online. I think it's online. At, at grace.1. Yep. Online at grace.1. Online at grace.1. They are so faithful to send messages to you to answer questions. So please do that. You can even praise the Lord with us with some praise hands. You know what I'm saying? The praise In the voice. chat. I don't know what those praise hands are about. Anyway, <laughs> thank y'all for being here. Listen, we're getting ready to go inside in a little bit and we're going to worship the Lord. Uh, we're lifting our hands and singing our songs, yeah. maybe doing a little dance, but we're also going to transition from the music, and we're going to worship God with our tithings yes. and offering services. This is where we bring to the Lord really our trust. Yes, uh, there's no heaven, there's no money that floats to heaven. It, it comes through the church, but you're doing it as unto the Lord, and it is our trust. We trust that God is our source, yes. and He's going to take care of all of our needs. Absolutely. How, how's, how's giving and tithing been to you? It's been a blessing to me. You know, I'm still hoping and believing and praying for that four-figure tithe, mm. but in the meantime, between time, I'm definitely being blessed with that 90%. Yeah. You know, I give that 10% willingly because I trust God with it, and I know he's going to bless me with the remaining 90. And it's the first 10. The first 10. It's not just 10. It's the first 10 because it's about honor. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, when I first was born again a few years ago, I didn't understand that, so I was doing it. But then when things got a little tight, I said, Lord, I'll hold up. I'll get you in a couple of weeks. You know, but that there. wasn't that wasn't it. It is I choose to be a tither and a giver. God is faithful, yes. so I choose to echo and be faithful to him. I like to say it's an intentional tithe. Yes. You know, it's, good. it's intentional. I'm intentional. Yes. I got clear intentions. That accidental. Whatever coming, I'm giving that first, yep. right out the gate. So yep, that's you know, good. That, hey, come on, you know what you're talking about. Man, hope is here, man. I'm it, telling you, it's, it is. It's here. just percolating out out the building. So today is is Palm, Palm Sunday. Sunday. Yes, and it is a wonderful celebration already. Yeah, we didn't bring palm leaves. But we showed up to watch God do what he wants to do. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, it's been a great service already. So Palm Sunday is this Sunday. Now, it leads to? It leads to Good Friday. Which really, it is a great Friday because Jesus paid yes. for all of our stuff at Calvary. Yeah, man. And to give us access back to the kingdom. It's so much that happened on that one day. Man. You know, and speaking of which. 
If you don't know, you'll find out by joining us on Good Friday at yeah. 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. We're going to be here yeah. in the place. Right. 7 o'clock on a Good Friday. Good Friday. And that leads us getting ready to what What comes after Good Friday? You know, let's see. There's Saturday. It is. Resurrection Sunday. You know. Let, let, Resurrection Sunday. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Resurrection Sunday. Listen, it is he got up. Yes. After paying the debt for us. And that should be every Christian's holiday. Yeah. Um, to just celebrate being alive, being in the kingdom, and Christ being in us. We should be overjoyed about it, as Stevie Wonder would say. Overjoyed. Okay, let me stop that. You know, since we so overjoyed as we leading up to Resurrection Sunday yeah. and Good Friday, yeah. this is a great time to let you know you can share this. You can help us and share this broadcast. You can host it. You can be at home. You yeah. can be at your hotel if you're yeah. traveling. Yeah. And you can be at work. Y'all yeah. can take a nice little lunch break around this time, <laughs> and you can help us host. There's going to be a moment yeah. there too, Good. right? So help us host it. Join us in spreading this word because we believe until everyone hears. Exactly. Right? right. That's right. Until everyone hears. So help us out with that. We want everybody to encounter God and to grow in the knowledge yes. of the kingdom of God. He has so much for you. So our Easter services are, what, what are the times? We got 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. A.M. A.M. We got 11 o'clock. A.M. A.M. And then we got 1230. P.M. P.M. Right? Three times. So if you can't be here in the place... Look at them threes, huh? Three days, three services. You, you if better you can't come on be here in the place or one of our campuses, yes. then you can do that online, online and invite as many people as you can. As Pastor Brett said in the last service, and I'm getting giving you a hint. You. I should have kept it to myself, but it's so good. I can't keep it to myself that we are to be hope carriers. Yeah. There are so many people, and you know this, in our world, our neighborhoods, and sometimes even in our families that are hopeless. But God, as we allow him to bring revelation to us, it opens our spiritual eyes Absolutely. so we can see clearer to make greater decisions, and that renews the hope. So we are to be hope carriers to bring hope to a hopeless world. And it was another point. Here's my snippet. Yeah. He said when people start feeling hopeless, they help less. They help less. I heard that too. Man, Man don't start nothing. Look. Both I, of us will be running. <laughs> He got light. Sorry. Sorry. But uh, I'm trying to You're tell you, exactly though. exactly right. I'm trying to tell you. That's the great thing about it, especially with the message being hope is here. Yeah. And here is a place where we believe in helping as much as possible. Yeah. So, you know, with you helping us, hosting, helping us spread the word yeah. and the messages that we get here, we just so full of hope. That's why we got so much help to give. This is, this is what it's about. So we can ready to go into the sanctuary and worship the Lord. Yes. But remember... Hope is here. So listen to the message, take notes, worship with us, and get ready for what God has had ready for you. Absolutely. Bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful service. We love you. Let's, Let's go praise. Let's do it. In there, because hope is here.
let's stand together. What a privilege to be at church together today at Palm Sunday as we enter into this holy week, this special season of remembrance. Why don't you tell somebody close to you and say, welcome to church. It's such a privilege to come together to worship. Why don't we take a moment with hearts lifted, with hands lifted, and pray together before we enter into worship. Jesus, we honor your name in this house today. God, we stand here free to worship God, and it's all for you, and it's all because of you. God, as we enter into this holy week, Lord, let us remember your sacrifice, God. Let us remember what your son did for us. God, move in this place today. God, receive our worship, Lord. Let our hearts be open to receive your word, God, and let your will be done today. And let the church say, amen, amen. All right, come on, let's worship together. I wish I could tell you, wish I could describe it. But I can't contain it, can't keep it to myself There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture Not enough words to ever say what I found Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy He is merciful Without joining the chorus, there aren't enough notes to make the harmony. It's a song of the angels, angels. for all of the ages. ages. It's all of the earth and heaven's symphony.
your praise rise in this house today. Come on, lift your worship. God, thank you that we can stand in your presence today as we enter into this holy week. God, thank you that I can call you Savior. Thank you that you're our healer. Thank you that you are our everlasting Father. You are our counselor. You are the Prince of Peace. You are everything we could ever hope for or need. And we can have hope because of you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if there's anything to be during this week, it's thankful to have a heart of gratitude. His blood that was poured out and we, look, we walk and live in mercy now, in unending grace, in love that never fails. Thank you, Jesus. Be lifted high in this place. Be lifted high in my life, Jesus. Oh, be lifted high. Be glorified, God. Be lifted high. Let it fill the house today.
sing in honor to Jesus, Hosanna, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Palm Sunday at Grace Church. This is such a special day to be able to gather together to worship and to receive the word. Aren't you glad you came to church today? My name is Katie. I'm one of the worship leaders at Grace. It is always an honor to worship with you. The best people on the planet are at Grace Church. If you're part of the Grace family or if you're a, a guest visiting with us or if you're watching online, we're so glad that you joined us. We're gonna take a moment and have some family time. Would you greet somebody close to you? Introduce yourself. Tell somebody that you're glad to see him at church today. Good morning, Grace Church. How are we feeling today? We are so glad that you decided to join with us today. If I've not been able to meet you yet, my name is Mark. I get the honor and the privilege of being the youth director here at our Humble campus. Uh, and whether you're watching online or if you're here in person, first, if you're a first time guest and this is your first time ever here, can we give it up for all of our first time guests today? You could have been out anywhere and you decided to be here and we thank you for that. Whether you're watching online or if you are in person, there's going to be a graphic that pops up and on the graphic is a QR code. And on the QR code, if you bring your phone out, open the camera app and scan it, it'll take you to our online connect card. And all our connect card is, is just basic information letting us know that you visited with us today. We're not going to spam you. We're not going to show up at your house randomly. We don't do that. We just want to get to know you and get to know, uh, know that you visited with us today with us today. And if you are a first time guest in the house, we wanna take it a step further after the service. If you go out into the lobby and take a right, you'll find our welcome center or our guest suite. We have one team members who are ready to meet you. They're, they've been praying all week to meet you and see your smiling face and we wanna to get to know you because this is a family, this is a home and we want you to come as you are. You don't have to put on a, a mask or a fake face or anything, no, come as you are. We wanna to get to know the real you. So join us out there in the lobby. For all of our members, we want to thank you for your faithfulness to the tithe and offering. We as believers know that our tithe is our first 10%. And it really extends our worship and then it also it helps us exercise our obedience. And I heard someone recently say that all our closeness to God isn't measured by a feeling. Our closeness to God is measured by our obedience. And when we exercise our obedience of giving of our first 10 that's us saying, God, I don't know what this is going to go. I don't know if this is really the right move, but I'm going to give you that first 10 because I know that you can do a lot more with that 10% than I could ever do. So give joyfully today. Give freely today. We have multiple ways for you to give. We have text to give. You can give on our app. You can give at grace.one. You can give in person. We have ushers walking the aisles with offering envelopes. And while they're walking through uh, with the offering envelopes, I have a couple quick announcements for you guys. First, on April 7th, it is our mass baptism service and this Sunday is my favorite baptism service that we have all year because it's not just our normal let's go out to the lobby let's see a few people get dunked no we bring the baptism tanks in here we take out that entire section over there and we put the baptism tanks over there and we have a huge baptism service and it is so special it's so beautiful if you've been thinking about getting baptized do not waste another moment you can register at grace.one forward slash next steps and get baptized that day it is so good you don't have to worry about anything we we have clothes for you we have products all that so you can still leave looking your sunday best get baptized with us that day it's going to be incredible and today we actually kick off what we as believers know as Holy Week. Today is our Palm Sunday. And then this Friday, we have Good Friday. We have a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. here in the main auditorium. It is going to be such an incredible time. We have, we're going to be partaking in communion as a family. So make sure that you make plans to be with us this Friday at 7 p.m. And then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. It came by real quick this year, uh, but we're so excited. We're going to have three services. We have the 9, the 11, and the 1230. And we want to encourage you, 
This is our most popular service. If you can adjust your schedule, join us either in the first service or the third service so we can make room for all the first time guests that we're going to be having that day. And we also want to encourage you, don't just come and attend church next Sunday. Come and serve the church next Sunday. You can serve, serve in a service and then sit in one service. We have an incredible kids ministry, an incredible production team, marketplace team, but we need your help. We're going to have so many people here on campus. Let us be the reason their first experience at church goes smoothly and it goes great because we're making way for lives to be changed for the rest of their life next Sunday. And if you've never experienced Easter here at Grace Church while the ushers are going around with the offering receptacles, turn your attention to the screen. See you in the house of the Lord today. Good things are happening, and I'm glad you came here. This is the best place to start your week. In God's house, singing Hosanna and worshiping the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. There's nobody like him. He has no rival. He has no equal. There's no one that can stand next to him. There's no one that has ever approached him and gone away empty-handed. He has never seen a need he couldn't handle. He has never seen a mountain he couldn't climb. He's never gone to a valley so deep that nobody down there could be reached. He's never seen a sin he couldn't vanquish. He's never seen a marriage he couldn't put back together. You came to a place of a winner today. His name is Jesus Christ and we worship him with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. And that's just a warm-up. I'm excited. Last several weeks, I have been going to all of our campuses, and I want you to know we have great, great miracles happening at Liberty and at Garden Oaks and at Tomball. We're going to uh, extra services at some of these campuses all the time. We have all-time high numbers. We're in a season of harvest. Don't miss yours. Don't miss yours. And I know God's got something great for you today. This is Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of Passion Week. And we're going to look at the Word of God today, and we're going to find some strength and some illumination from His Word. I had a little dental work done this week, so if in the middle of this you see me move a thing or two around, it's all tied in. It just doesn't know it yet, so we got to got to make it happen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Word. I pray that it's anointed and blessed from the very moment we begin to speak it. Let that blessed, anointed Word. Let it minister to this house. Lord, if somebody here today has not made you their Savior, let them not leave here today without making that sure. And for the rest of us, Lord, that are looking at Passion Week with a holy glance, let us see it for what it is and be transformed because of your great sacrifice. 
In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Today we remember how Jesus entered into Jerusalem to fulfill his mission that was going to end not at the cross, but at the tomb, empty, a week from today. The people shouted, Hosanna. They waved palm branches. They heralded his coming for the great joy they expected it to be. It's also known as Passion Sunday. Oh, the inexorable pain and suffering that Jesus endured, that he went through in our place on the cross. Oh God, I'm so grateful. The mercurial crowd, as he is coming into the city, they go to the trees and they pull down branches. They take their coats, their cloaks, they throw them on the, on the, on the ground. They wave their palm branches. But this crowd, they change so quickly from hail him that before the week was done, they were saying nail him. The branches once waved in his honor are now picked back up off the ground and used to lash him as he pulls the cross toward Calvary. And from that great tragedy came the greatest victory planet Earth has ever known. Jesus died in our place for sins, not his. He didn't have any. He paid for sins that he didn't have to pay for. So I could live a life I don't deserve. He paid the price for sins and he gave hope a name. Yes, sir. Hope has a name when you have nothing left but a moment to whisper. That's the time to say, Jesus. Yes, and when you call out his name, all of heaven pauses in attention because you've then used the legal right we have to go to the throne of God. That's why we end our prayers in Jesus' name we pray because we're not praying in the name of George or Mike or Brett. We're praying in the name of Jesus, which means I'm here in the name of your son who gave me the right to come to you. And by proxy, I speak this. Look at the scripture, Mark 11, verse seven. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut out of the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessing is the coming of the kingdom of our father David. Listen to that. Blessed is the kingdom coming. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Jesus rode in town not on a prancing white steed as a returning army general would. He came in on the lowliest of, of beasts of burden. He came in on the back of a donkey. He did that because he was fulfilling the messianic prophecy. Everything in the Old Testament, in the New Testament is revealed, in the Old Testament concealed. The Old Testament is speaking of the New Testament. Whenever Isaiah said, unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given, he was speaking of what was going to happen in the New Testament. And when Zechariah chapter nine and nine says, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, Jesus fulfilled every promise in scripture that he was the Messiah. He came to their sacred city during the time of the tyrannical Roman rule, the first Palm Sunday, that one he rides in, he comes in with such high hopes. The people are, are exalting him. They're so excited. They, they, they're holding on to hope. They need hope for healing. 
They need hope for rest. They want hope for saving their world. They believe he's bringing them hope to break the Roman rule. They, they believe that the province of the Romans is going to have to leave and leave them to their Hebrew culture. They believe that Jesus is coming to introduce God's kingdom. And Jesus was the answer they had been looking for. But from the moment he came in, something wasn't right with what they had in their mind and what he came to do. He had no army to marshal. He brought salvation, he brought freedom, and he brought healing to the world. But they thought that meant he was gonna kick out the Romans. They thought that meant it was gonna be a, a, an army he was going to marshal to come and to liberate them physically. If you study kingdom theology, which is what we, we're gonna touch just a little today, if you study kingdom theology, there's a phrase you're gonna find. The phrase is already and not yet. Already and not yet. And this might help some that say, why is evil in the world? Why didn't God stop that from happening? Why didn't God step in and change that? Kingdom theology <clears throat> is already and not yet. This is a phrase about the kingdom of God. We, we, we already, right now, we already live in the present age, and that's called the now, and we await the age that is to come. <clears throat> that's the age of the not yet. Not yet is telling us that Jesus has not ruled the earth yet. Satan is still loose in the earth. He's still doing all he can. He knows he's gonna lose because he's seen this story from creation, but he's doing all he can just to create havoc. Stop and think, he doesn't just get people on his side, he abuses the people who come to his side. Serving him is not a place that pays. And this is a place where we're already in the kingdom because kingdom culture comes into our age now but it's not yet, as in it's not in its entirety yet. Evil still happens because God's still letting men choose. Evil still happens because evil is there, good is here, Satan is here, Jesus is here, and people still have a choice. But through evangelism, what you and I are doing, the love of Jesus is flipping the world over and it's flipping it right side up, not upside down, it's right side up. His kingdom has begun. There are times we look and say, say look at that. That, that, look what happened here, look at the hand of God, see how God worked that out, watch how God did that. It's already here, it's already and not yet. It's not complete. Some say, well, we're already there. No, because Satan is still at work. Whenever we're all there, when the kingdom age has come, when the, remember the Bible called it the fullness of time, when the fullness of time had come, that's when Jesus came. Now we're waiting on the fullness of time when Jesus comes again. When Jesus comes again, there will be no tempter. There will be no Satan. We celebrate it first with a 1,000 year party of nothing but peace. That's how it all begins. But it's already, but not yet. It has begun but you and I have a part now to continue building it until it's his final return. So we're here today and every time we meet to put another brick of hope and to focus today that hope is here for the weary, his name is Jesus. Hope is here today for the brokenhearted, his name is Jesus. Hope is here for every home, every life. Well, all this bad is happening and in the middle of the bad, good is happening. God's got it, he's there. Call upon him while you can. Seek him while he may be found. This is the day you get to choose. This is the day you get to decide. Hope is a vision of the future and that changes us in the present. Hope is a vision of the future that changes us in the present. What we hope for for the future causes us to change our activity now. We have hope in that future, so we behave accordingly now. We hope and we hold out hope for heaven, 
the great celestial city. That's the place where the sun doesn't even need to shine because the lamb himself is the light. And we are so grateful for the hope we have in a better tomorrow. And I do believe in a place where there is no sorrow and no pain and there are no tears and there is no heartache. And we have that promise and we have that hope deep within us. But realize this also, hope is also a vision of the future that doesn't just change you, but it can change the world. If God's design was heaven, and that's the ultimate goal, the second you were saved, God would kill you. Because if all he's trying to do is populate heaven, getting saved would transport you there immediately. That's not what he's doing. Heaven is a reward. The thing that we want most is to be with Jesus, wherever that would be. But we look and we've made heaven like it's the ultimate goal. Heaven is the ultimate reward. The ultimate goal is to not go to heaven alone. The ultimate goal is that you help others get there. The ultimate goal is you bring a group with you. You bring your family with you. You bring your grandchildren with you. You bring your mom with you. You may be the only teenager in your family that serves Jesus. Part of the thing that will make heaven beautiful for you is that you'll look around and see your mother and your dad and your parents and your grandparents and the ones that you brought there. That's the, that's the reward of heaven. I hope we can change the world because when a person has hope, anything can happen. All it takes is one hope-filled thought, one idea. I mean, it, it doesn't take a million. One can, can nudge, just a small nudge can move to action. All it takes is one lady on a bus to say, no, I'm not moving to the back of the bus today. No, no, I'm not. And one lady can set off a national movement that we still feel the repercussions of that one sweet little lady, Mrs. Parks, that said, no, I'm tired. I worked all day. I don't want to move just because of the color of my skin. No. One unknown man, 1989, Tiananmen Square. The Chinese have been killing people. They have been killing the protesters. Everybody that was young that was trying to protest against all the tyranny, hundreds and hundreds have, have died. The tanks are coming in in mass. If you watch the video, it's a long line of tanks. There's probably 50 in that line at least. And one man, we don't even know his name. They just call him Standing Man. One man who had been shopping. He's got his shopping bags in his hand. He just has enough, and he just walks out in front of the tank and stands there, and it tries to move, and he moves, and he tries to move, and he moves, and one man, one man in a country of a billion people, one man shut down the whole revolt because he just had enough. So I'm telling you, you can be the purveyor of hope. You should carry hope in your heart. Well, I've seen a lot of bad things happen. Then that means hope. That means hope will shine a lot brighter whenever you step up. There's a lot of people don't want this. You, this isn't an election. This is you saying, I'm hoping. I stand. I won't be like the others. I won't say what they say. What's everybody saying? I won't say that. What's everybody doing? I won't do that. I'm not going with the masses. I'm not going to be a part of all that. I'm going to stand on what I know and what I have experienced and what God has shown me. We've got to be the carriers of that hope. But there's two problems in the way of hope. The first problem it's a theological problem. It's called Christian escapism. And Christian escapism is made up of people who are waiting to escape this mess called earth so they can reach heaven. At times you just get so tired of it all. Even, co even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. There's times that you just get, 
I, I, I can't, can't take another Christian escapism. Come get me out. Whenever you begin to practice Christian escapism, then you have forgotten the mandate that came with being saved. The mandate with being saved was go make disciples. The, the mandate was go baptize, go teach, go make disciples. That's the part some of us are willing to be the discipled, but we haven't been involved in making the disciples. It's not a good sign whenever you've been working four years, one day in the office, somebody says, you know, old Joey, he's a, he's a Christian, and your, your friend, your people go, you? You're a Christian? <sighs> wow, I had no idea. That's not a good thing. Now, you don't have to walk around all the time screaming and, and, and ranting and raving, but there's ways you can show you are a child of God and not silent, just waiting for the great extraction program. <laughs> Beam me up, angel, I'm ready to go. Some of us, we haven't been involved in, in seeing anyone else saved. That's not the marching orders we were given by God. Well, I'm not comfortable. Okay, you've got to get comfortable. You've got to find a way to be comfortable. So you don't have to do it like somebody else does it, but you've got to somehow, somewhere say, you've got to do something that someone looks at you and says, what is it about you? And then you explain. Or why do you, this? or okay, what is this praying over your food thing? I, anything can set up that moment for you to say, yes, I'm a believer. Yes, I'm a hope-filled Christian. Yes, I know him. <clears throat> the old story about, about the elocution classes. You don't hardly have that anymore. Elocution way to speak. The classes where you, you learn diction and you learn exactly what to say. So held in the college in, uh, in New York, New York University. This was back like in the, uh, coming out of the war in the 40s. And um, so the instructor said, I want you to read uh, something of your choice, something that, that, that you think you would show us your, what you've learned in this class. And one of the guys that had been such a brilliant one, he got up <clears throat> and he opened and said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul. And everyone listened. And when he got through, they gave him a thunder ovation. The diction was right. The emphasis was, emphasis was right. <clears throat> it was wonderful. And then an old man shuffled up. And he didn't even open anything. He just said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When he got done, there was ovation, and the professor's like, what, 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 what? The first guy's elocution was perfect. The second guy, he didn't rise and fall and crescendo with the words. And the lady that was sweeping up the classroom, she said, I know the difference. She said, the first man knew the psalm. The second man knew the shepherd. I'm asking you, do you know what to say or do you know who says? I'm asking you, do you have a relationship with Jesus that you're able to speak for him to someone who does not know him? Oh, I'm not that good at that. You don't have to be that good at that. You have to be good at telling your testimony. 
You have to say, I was jacked up, messed up, and lost, but God reached down, turned me around, set my feet on a high. Yeah, you don't even have to make it rhyme, but it's good if you do. We cannot sit back and wait for heaven and fulfill God's mission. You know, John 3.16 is probably the most quoted verse in the Bible. Far away, John 3.16. So everybody that did King James Version is over 50. <laughs> and some of y'all doing the message are probably about 12. <laughs> because we all learned it the way we learned it and we, we got it in there. And this, this is the deal with John 3.16. We have to be careful because that verse can be used as escapism. That verse can say, oh, the Lord, he, he loved the world. He gave me his son. I believe in him and I'm going to have eternal life. Does anybody, anybody remember something like John 3, 17? I'll help you with that one. <laughs> For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. But to save the world. He didn't come to save you. He came to save the world. So you're saved, I'm glad. Now help us with the mission of saving the world. Save the world. He came to save the world through him. So this story isn't God saving you from the world, it's God saving you for the world. He saved you so you could be his witness. The kingdom isn't just in heaven, the kingdom has already begun and it's right here on earth. Now it's not yet fully established and it's our job to get to work to spread the hope because Jesus is the hope of the world and that hope is shown through you and he will return someday. And when he returns, we want to be able to say, look what we did for you, Jesus. Look who we told, look who we baptized, look who we brought in more than Oh, I'm so glad you came back, God. I had 17 locks on my door. I didn't know how much longer I could stay in this neighborhood. Nothing but hooligans and thieves and drug addicts around here. I have my groceries delivered, and I got a gun here, and I got a gun there, and I'm watching out close. I don't know what's going on. I almost shot my mother the other day. She came to the door. <laughs> Salt in the shaker doesn't change the flavor of the food. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. You got to do something with it. I think I might need to stay here a while. I'm telling you. Don't miss this. The focus of our Christianity needs to be less about getting to heaven and more about bringing heaven down here. Yes, there's going to be a heaven. Yes, we got funerals this week where we, we're going to talk about what those that have gone on have a, obtained. But I'm not trying, if, if he's getting up a load for heaven tonight, anybody on? Y'all want to just gather out front, we'll get you a bus. Come on now, you, you're not looking for it, but we act like in our life, I just want to go to heaven. I remember testimony service. God, thank you, Jesus, those days are over. The testimony service, people stand up and often end it with, and I just want to make heaven my home. You know. Pray for me that I can make heaven my home. What would that prayer look like? Oh, God, this selfish dude wants you to give him heaven. And he's not going to help anybody else get there. But I, I don't know how to pray that prayer. I'm going to leave that one alone. <clears throat> the second problem, I, I just got on some toes. I can feel that. The second problem is what psychologists call learned helplessness. In psychology, learned helplessness is a state that occurs after a person has experienced a very stressful situation repeatedly. If a person believes they are unable to control or change the situation, often they stop trying, even when a solution or an answer for change has come. Sometimes the door is open and they still won't go out of the door. They, they did it first with 
laboratory animals, 1967. They were exposed to a series of shocks. Later, they removed all the boundaries and the, and the animals can leave, but they stayed and just endured the shocks because they had learned helplessness. They had learned, I, can, I cannot help this. I have to just take this. I have to just accept this. Even, even when there's a way out, I just accept this. Often people who are repeatedly exposed to stressful situations beyond their control develop an inability to make decisions or to engage in some kind of purposeful behavior. Remember this, when people become hopeless, they begin to help less. When you become hopeless, you'll find you will help less. You don't even know why. You see things are getting worse. You just let it happen. You see things are happening. You turn your head and walk away. You see somebody getting mugged and you just walk by. Learned helplessness. Don't get involved. Well, if Rosa Parks didn't get involved, then we don't get to change that. If the Tiananmen Square man doesn't get involved, we don't get to see some sort of a slight change in China's horrific history of human rights. Just avoiding, avoiding the pain, that's not even in line with what the Lord said would be required of us. So yes, heaven's there. But between now and then, we are ambassadors of the king to bring people closer to him. And we get to make an eternal impact. The beautiful thing about following Jesus is that you are no longer on your own. You're following Jesus, you're no longer on your own. Yes, you're still facing the things you faced before, but you don't face them alone. You don't have to carry your cross alone. God's got you. God, God's with you. God is the one who designed you to create hope and to share it far and wide. Ditch the pessimism. Get hold of the optimism. Hope again. Believe again. Dream again. Oh, last time I did that, it didn't work. Well, every time you plant, you don't get a harvest. But the proof is in the fact that if you keep planting, you do get a harvest. So farmers get back out and plant after a bad year because they know for sure not planting will not get a harvest. So you stand up here and you say, I'm going to do this. Jesus, knowing what he was facing, going into Jerusalem, triumphantly rode in, knowing what he was gonna face, but he also knew his father would not let him fail so he chose to hope. Yes, yes. Hope. Hebrews 10, 22, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Musicians come. Let the worshipers arise. Let the children of God be strong in the mission God has called us. He called us to make a difference. So I pray that you will loose godly hope in your life and you will allow the dreams he placed inside of you to come to life. Your dreams are gonna have to see some sunshine if they're gonna grow. They're gonna have to see some life if they're going to grow. Some of you ought to revisit your dream. You wanted to start a charity, start a charity, do it full of hope, because hope has a name, Jesus. Imitate your creator. Create something beautiful, create some art. Open your little art, your art studio deal. Whatever, I'm not denigrating, I just don't know what they're called. Open it, do stuff. Those of you that can do that, do that. Because that means you're not an animal. 
because there's no animals that are opening art studios. And paint, and that someone says, oh, where did you get your, your motivation? Jesus. Oh. Spread small acts of kindness. What, what if everybody in your office tomorrow had a peppermint sitting at their desk? Maybe their breath would smell better. <laughs> if they're diabetic, maybe you'll get to pray for them and get them out of a diabetic shock. Then you can show the power of God. Come on now, I'm being silly. I'm trying to get you. What, what, what small act of kindness could you do that people would say, wow, thank you. What, what, what made you do this? Oh, this is a big week for me. This is the week everything I hope for and believe in is pressed into a seven or eight day period. And it's just like a holy week for me. We start it with great joy. We go in the middle of it with great sorrow. We go toward the end of it with unimaginable loss. But we come out of it next Sunday with the hope of the world who can never die. So it's a big week for me and you share that with somebody else. You share that with somebody else. Try, try this for a hope-filled life change. Do some of these things. Students, do, do something at school this week that, will, that could very likely change someone's life. Like, like this. At, the, at, at lunch, look around and see that student that's sitting alone and go sit with them. Well, but they're not the, they're not the cool kid. Nobody's cool. <laughs> Nobody's cool. Well, they're a nerd, so they'll probably end up on a Microsoft, okay. How about taking off your blinders of what, and not just students, all of us, of what somebody else is. And just go sit down and say, hey, what's up? I'm gonna tell you what, if it's that kid that's so lonely that they go home every day and cry, you could change someone's life. You could change their world. Years ago at the airport, I was working, uh, I have an office there and I was doing several days in a row there. A guy named Manuel, He's on the, on the cleaning team. He comes by, he's, he's just always wonderful and nice. And the doors open, he comes in, he cleaned up my office. And I met him, I'd known him a time or two. And I just mentioned one day, I said, Manuel, you, 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 you must have 20 black shirts and 20 black pairs of pants because you, you always look so good. And you always just, I mean, you know, I'm just talking. I'm just, I'm just a conversation. He said, no, senor. Solamente una. I only have one. Camisa? Si. Uh, one shirt? Yeah. Pantalones? Si. Only one? one? What do you do? Every night, Manuel washes. Because he's, he's, in, he's in, ma in maintenance or in cleaning. So he, he's, he's got to wash them every night. He washes them every night in a sink. Hangs them up. Irons them the next morning comes to work. So I thought, I wonder how many, I wonder how long it would take for someone to notice something like that. So <clears throat> for the next five days, <clears throat> when I went out there, I wore the exact shirt, exact pants every day. Now you stop and think of how long you stand in front of that closet looking, does that match, does that match, should I, no, 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 stop and think of, think of it, think how much simpler it is, yes, yes, so I thought, okay, so what this is like, and I warmed the first day, obviously no one said anything, on the second day, I am quite sure everyone's gonna go, hey, uh, 
problems at home, sleeping in the car, wife's got you in the doghouse, whatever. Nobody said a word. Let me give you a clue. You're not nearly as important in everybody else's eyes as you think you are. You think everybody's watching, not everybody. Third day. I mean, if Manuel can do it, I can do it. So I'm in, in third day, same, same set of clothes. I'm telling you what, it takes about 20 minutes out of the morning. You get up in the morning and go, what are you gonna wear? That and that, okay, yeah, you're done. Go eat your egg and, and your bowl of cereal or whatever it is you do. Fourth day, was well, the same thing. On the fifth day, I was in a meeting. One of them was one of the directors of the airport. He said, do y'all have um, uniforms at the chapel? And I said, no, sir. He said, I, I was wondering, because I, 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 think, I think I saw you wearing that the other day. I said, you did. You did. You, you saw me wear it the other day. Because Manuel, in the housekeeping, he, he has only one shirt and one pair of pants. And I thought if he could do it, I'd do it. Let's just see how much. And folks, I'm finding out all the, oh, we spend so much time. The enemy's got us so out of focus on what's important and so focused on things. It just, and the, the director of the airport uh, back then, his name was Tom Bartlett. He said, he only has one pair. Said, yeah. And I understand several others. Well, that was when they decided to furnish uniforms and out of the city budget. Yeah, thank you very much. I helped raise your taxes. Out of the city budget. They now get three shirts three pair of pants, they all have something to wear. And Manuel, he would come by and go, gracias, senor. And I'm like, I didn't do that to help you, but look what happened. Just, just for a minute, acting like you're not all that in a bag of chips, just being somebody. How about, how about I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, he's our savior. It doesn't matter how rich I am or how poor I am. It's the same cost. It's all of his blood, all of his life to save me. It took all of his life. Why don't you and I just lay all these pretensions down and let's get back to what it really is. It's one beggar telling another beggar where he found something to eat. This is Holy Week. Let's spread the gospel. I, this week, I, I, I want you to do this thing. This is my Easter challenge for you. Prayer team, would you come? Prayer team, come, come get in place. Here, here's my Easter challenge for you. <clears throat> Number one, pray every day this Holy Week for people you know they need God and God's put them on your heart. If no one's, just, just accept, you know, hear this without the harshness in it. If no one's on your heart for prayer, something's wrong with your prayer. Something's wrong with your heart. And I know how it happens because it happens to me. We get so busy with life that we stop, stop to, to, wait, 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 think for a second. You know, the, 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 the concept of, I complained when I saw a man who had no shoes till I saw a man who had no feet. Somewhere in here where you and I you, you, and, you and I get to the place where we, we realize it's our witness for him. That's how the kingdom comes. It's our witness for him. So who, who is it that you can pray for every day this week? It might be someone that you could tell them. I want you to know that Sunday, our pastor challenged us to pray for people, and I want you to know I'm praying for you. You don't even have to tell them what for. Most people will say thank you. Some may not. Some, they may be antagonistic, and you just need to pray for them. But pray. Pray that there is salvation in their lives. Pray they make a decision. Pray they see that the Savior came to earth for them. So that's, that's the first challenge I have for you. I want you to grasp that. I want you to hold that. Pray every, every day this holy week. And secondly, invite them to Easter Sunday next weekend. There, the percentages are high. I don't remember the number, but it's super high 
If you invite somebody on Easter week, it's super high they say yes as opposed to other weeks. Because so many people are doing it. Just say, hey, I want you to come. Uh, you know, it can't be very long. It'll be Pastor Scott. Now, if you want them to have real gospel, bring them. I'll be at Garden Oaks. You can bring them to me over there. <laughs> if not, <clears throat> no, we're going to do three services next weekend here, and we will present the gospel. Can you imagine 10 days from now how your neighbors, your relatives, how people will look at you and thank you for introducing them to the Savior of the world. There's nothing like it. It's better than any return on any investment. There's nothing like it to have your name written in someone's testimonial is one of the greatest joys you will have in your life. So Jesus, Already and not yet. He's already here. That's the beauty he does in our lives. He's not yet here to take over the earth just yet because the Bible says the evil one doth now work. That's why there's evil in the earth. But the Lord's gonna wrap this up. The reason it's happening is that's our opportunity to get more people into the kingdom. So if someone wants to know why this stuff happens, because we're in the period where it's still open enrollment. It's wide open. You can come in. There will be a day it won't be that. So I want to make a difference. How about you? I want to make a difference. I want. I want to. I want to make a difference. Now, if you have need for prayer, I want you to come right now. If you would come quickly. I've, I've kept us a little bit long. Come quickly, and then. Those of you that have people that you pray for and people that you want to be saved and they've been recalcitrant, it's not, it's not flowed well, and you want us to pray with you about the people you're praying for, come on down for that too. Let us, let us join our faith with yours that we have double faith going after those people in your life that you want to see come to salvation. If you have not yet been saved, if you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, you don't have to wait for Easter Sunday. Palm Sunday's a great time for you. Come on right now and every one of our prayer team is available and ready to help lead you to Jesus. You can be led to the, to the hands of the Savior today. We can do it, just come on down. We'll, if you know how to pray, we'll, we'll listen with you, we'll help, or you don't know how, we'll show you how. We wanna make sure you are secure in your relationship with God. So come on, get, it, get in line. I don't want to release anybody to leave until everybody that wants to pray has gotten in place. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Look at the, look at the people in the aisles. We all need prayer, don't we? Look, look how many people gather in the aisles. I tell you what, let's worship for a few moments before we leave. And while we worship, these people are praying. Let's just bring in a spirit of, of expectancy, not only for these that are here, but for the people you're gonna meet this week. So why don't you lift your voice in song? Don't, don't slip out yet. Go ahead. Hello, Grace family. Oh my goodness, if you're anything like me, when you hear a message like that, you have to say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? And one of the first things that he would say to you is if you've never received Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, you can do that right now. Even if you're watching this in the middle of the week, if you want to receive Jesus, let's just pray together right now and just say, Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. And today I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Forgive me for every sin I've committed. Today, I ask you to be my Lord. And I confess you right now, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and you're my Savior. I say yes to you. Take my life and use it as you will in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer from your heart, friends, you are now in the family of God. <laughs> Let me welcome you.
Welcome to the family of God. And you can get connected right here. In the chat, you'll see where you can get connected. A planted Christian is a Christian that is maturing in the things of the Lord. Well, listen, this has been Palm Sunday. It's been a great day. Pastor Brett has been teaching uh, another addition to the series, Hope. <laughs> hope is here, and it's in the person of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, he said that each of us, when we're born again, it's not just for heaven. We are to be hope carriers. Well, listen, next Friday, March 29th, it's going to be Good Friday, 7 p.m. will be that service. We're going to be serving communion. Make sure you're here for that. Also here at the Humble Campus on Sunday. It is Resurrection Sunday at all of our campuses. Of course, it's, it's Resurrection or Easter Sunday. And uh, you want to be here for the 9 a.m., the 11 a.m., or the 12.30. So much is going on. But just remember, God has a divine purpose for your life. He loves you unconditionally. And we're hoping to see you Good Friday and or on Easter morning at one of our services. You can even come to work one service and then come to, to worship with us. It's a great time where we remember our Lord and Savior. Love you. Remember God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next time.